This is a Mead ETX telescope with LNT technology. The LNT is level north technology and basically it's a compass and an accelerometer that will figure out where your north is and how far out of level your telescope tripod might be. Um, and so it helps pointing for the initial alignment. Um, it is integrated into this red dot finder here and one other thing that this circuit board has on it is a real-time clock which might be the most useful feature out of the whole thing. So the real-time clock means that when you turn on your auto star it can get the time and date from the real-time clock that's in here and you don't have to type it in from your watch every night. Now when the battery in here will die, it lasts about five years, but when it dies you stop getting real-time clock information and so you should replace the battery or even if you're not going to replace it you should probably take the battery out just so it doesn't burst in there and hurt anything. So if your real-time clock isn't working when you go to um, mode for the menu it's going to say getting the time and then immediately goes to enter the date and you have to enter the date and the time and the time zone. Now accessing the battery in here does require that you remove the two setting screws that's adjustment for you know X and Y adjustment on your finder scope. So you are going to lose the calibration between your telescope and your finder scope. It's not too hard to put back in, but you do lose that. Now it shouldn't require any tools other than maybe a tiny screwdriver to pry the battery out of the battery compartment. So to remove this, we need to remove this bottom up and down screw right here and then the side adjust screw right there. There are two springs in here, so I do recommend having a little container ready to hold onto your parts. Um, one spring is sandwiched between the inside and the outside unit here. So when you unscrew this guy fully, and it's going to take a lot of turning to unscrew it, um, but when you do that, that spring will be sandwiched there and ready to spring out. So I'm keeping my finger underneath this spot just to make it less likely to fly all over the place. Now this guy is screwed into a bolt about halfway through or a nut about halfway through and so it takes a lot of turning to get this long one out. It's also longer than the up and down adjuster so when you're putting them back in it's pretty easy to tell which is which is the super long one goes left right and then the uh, shorter one is the up and down adjuster. Okay so that just pulled out so I can pull this thing out. As soon as I pull it out the spring may spring or fall out so I'm going to reach in using this guy just reach in there to try to get that spring out. There it is It's stuck in a little hole there, but, you know, so it's small. You don't want to lose this guy on the floor. So we have those two guys out there. Now this one, the spring is less likely to fly away. Um, there. You saw it pop up. It's on the spring, and when you pull this thing off, you'll see the spring right there fits into this little nut that that um, adjustment bolt goes into. And so I just put these springs on the appropriate bolt so I kind of remember which is which. So, you know, the small spring goes on the long bolt, which is left and right, and then the big spring goes on the short bolt, which is up and down. So now that this is off, you can see it a lot better. Um, there's two wires that go to the red LED for the red spot here. Um, so you want to be gentle with this and not yank on things. You want to support that thing a little bit. Um, the up and down bolt comes straight out through here. So the spring just goes in that black area, connects up to this post, and the bolt goes through the whole thing. Now the left and right adjuster, um, over here there's a little hole in this plastic. And when you reassemble this, that's probably the trickiest bit, is you need to get this spring in that hole, and then you need to compress the spring in and put this thing on top of it so the spring is between the inside of that plastic and the outside of this plastic, and then you have to thread this long bolt 
through the plastic, through the spring, through the rest of the plastic, and it comes out a hole on the other side. They all have to line up. So when you put it back together, that's how you do that. Um, and here's the battery that needs replacing. And so there's a little tab right here that you can probably get with your finger, but if you have trouble with it, you can use a tiny little screwdriver to push that tab in. And it's just a CR2032. Uh, this is a great power brand. I'm going to be using a name brand. I'll put a link in the description to the battery I'm using. Um, but you just buy another coin cell, snap it in, and you should be good for another five years. All right, I'm using Energizer 2032s. You could use Duracell, but I figure if you're going to the effort to opening this guy up and putting a battery in, you might as well get the best battery you can. Once you've taken the top off, installing the battery is very simple. You just slot it in and then make sure it's past that little metal thing and then snap. And now it's in place. Now you might have noticed there that when I pushed the mode button it said getting time and then it went immediately to my menu. However, so it means it got the time from the atomic clock, but I suspect that time is wrong because I just replaced the battery. So I need to go into the menu here and we have the setup menu. I think the time is going to be under the setup menu. There's time. So we press enter and now I have to go in here Actually, I'm going to do 9 a.m. because it just switched over to 9 a.m. more money. And I'm using a time source with seconds, and so I'm going to go to 25 seconds and then change this to a.m. And I'm going to wait until this thing hits 24 and a half seconds before I hit the button here. Because if you have a real-time clock, you might as well set the seconds accurately as well. Now, realistically, um, you know, if you're off by 60 seconds, it's not going to matter much. Now, I do also want to check the date because I'm off by one day here. All right, and now we're all set up. And if you turn the telescope off and then turn it back on, it will retain the time so that when you go into here um, and push the mode key to align, it will already have the time and get it from the atomic clock. Um, and if you go to your setup menu and check the time, you'll see here it's 9.01.04. And that time um, is not changing. That was 9.01.04 when I pushed the button. A reassembly is the opposite of disassembly with the added complexity that you got these, these springs in the right spots. Um, and so this spring here, the big one, fits over that guy there, and then the little spring will go in the hole that's on this side over here that's nearest the telescope. And the tricky thing is it's hard to get that guy to stay in place while you're putting the cover on. So this little spring has to go in that hole, and you have to compress it while you're placing this guy on, and the top of that spring has to go into this little black hole with the brass nut in it. So if you line all that up right, you can push this in and hold it in there and then put this bolt has to go through that spring. So this is the hardest bit of the whole procedure, I think, is the front spring. So you can kind of look through the hole and see if your spring's in line with the hole. And that's essentially what you have to do. And sometimes I use the bolt to hold the spring while I'm pushing the hole forward. And if you get this through there, it'll hold the spring in place after that. Um, and then you have to get it through the hole on the inside and into the nut. And once you get it in the nut, then you can screw it through. Okay, so I'm holding this down a little bit to get things to line up. I've gotten the long bolt through the nut, and I just have to get it through the other side of the lower plastic, and then through the hole on this guy right here. 
and you can kind of aim there and you can see it come through the hole. Now this guy here I think the spring holds it lined up a little easier so you just have to push it down and then catch that nut. And that's the only tricky bit is getting it in the nut. So it has to go through the spring and find the nut. And so I kind of wiggle it around while turning it and you can move the top around a little bit to try to find the hole. And usually you can feel the bolt pushing against the top of this thing and you just have to get it in place by feel. And you'll know it's in place when it starts holding it down. So right now it's not holding it down, so it's not in place. There, now it's holding it down. And I can move this in and out by screwing in that up and down adjustment bolt. And so now that you've done this, you have to find a terrestrial target, center it in your eyepiece, and then adjust the left, right, and up, down bolt so that the red dot will match um, the thing you're looking at here to align the red dot with your scope. And as a reminder, to turn on the red dot when you're not in alignment mode, um, the flashlight button, the zero with a little light on it, um, if you press and hold that, this flashlight, the little red LED flashlight up here will turn on. And while that red LED flashlight's on, this LED light here for the red dot finder is also on. So you'll need to turn that on to align your scope.